Anyway, I'm sure you all know Condo Insider is a weekly show brought to you to kind of talk story with board members and owners and people who live in an association, but what the Hawaii requirements are and kind of give you some education since it's a, a big part of our community. I think it's been estimated that 35% uh, of our population lives in some form of an association, meaning they have a board of directors and some self-governance and some issues. A couple of weeks ago, I talked about the Champlain Towers South, often called by everybody Surfside, the collapse of that condominium building in uh, Florida. And what I wanted to do today is kind of tell you that my thoughts back then looked like they may be coming true and that this would create a tidal wave of legislation and issues and problems for associations uh, because of everybody looking at, we know if the associations are being maintained or not and, uh, and, the, and are people safe and those kinds of issues. So today it's called Hot Off the Press because I'm going to talk about a letter that was issued by FHA, which is Fannie Mae Freddie Back, dated October 13th, 2021, which is yesterday. And it begins and kind of brings to the surface the issues of um, uh, what was being said at, uh, we said a couple of weeks ago about the Surfside collapse and what it might do to uh, future governance of condominiums. So let me just begin by reminding everybody that one of the major mortgage markets for buyers in a condo is Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and you might add a VHA on top of that, but the government backed mortgage programs. Most banks who offer these programs basically sell the mortgage to the government. So they're getting a fee for processing and making some money, but it's all dictated the rules, the underwriting, the regulations are by Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. And it raises the question, what if you wanted to sell your condo and you couldn't get a buyer because nobody qualified for a FHA, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac mortgage because uh, your condo isn't approved by them to, uh, to grant that type of a mortgage. And uh, up to now, it hasn't been too much of a problem, but this letter that came out yesterday, primarily because of the Surfside condominium collapse, and uh, the letter actually addresses that, saying that because of the Surfside condominium collapse, they are issuing lender letter LL-2021-14 that takes effect January 1, 2022, and shall be continued indefinitely. Why this is important again is this is where buyers of condominiums typically go to get their mortgage for a condominium. Granted, banks do offer portfolio loans and some other choices, but the dominant part of the market, particularly for young buyers, is the Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac type mortgages. So what did this lender letter say that was issued yesterday as effective January 1? First of all, it said to be qualified at the condominium for a loan, there is new criteria. And I'm gonna look down at the letter because I haven't had a chance to memorize all this yet. That first of all, that if you have a building that is going to require a repair in the future, that will require, I'm going to use the word evacuation, people to move out while the repair is made because it's a large repair of substantial damage, you're no longer eligible for a Fannie Mae Freddie Mac mortgage. The mere fact that you have, and you're going to find out later as I go through this, They've got the checks and balances on this. Um, you're going to find out that if you have a major repair being made, it's going to require people to move out. You're no longer eligible for a Fannie Mae Freddie Mac mortgage. Number two, I'm going to read this. If improvements need substantial repairs and rehabilitation, particularly the major components, that impede the safe or sound functioning of the building's major structural and mechanical elements, 
not limited to the foundation, roof, load bearing structures, electrical system, HVAC, air conditioning, or plumbing. But if you have a building that's going to require major repairs, you're no longer eligible for a Fannie Mae, Freddie, Freddie Mac mortgage. You are just excluded. And so you have a deficiency that is not re remedied. And now the question resolves itself as if it's in the reserve study itself. Uh, how does, how's that gonna work out? And I'll get to that in a minute. But the other thing it says that if you have a special assessment, a part of your existing budget for the major repair and replacement, you've already fixed the things, but all the owners are paying a special assessment because of that loan to fix everything. It requires a specific review of the facts and circumstances around that special assessment to see if it has a negative impact on the building. Granted, that's somewhat um, speculative, but the reality of it is they're saying, hey, look, we want to know that the building, you know, they're giving. They're taking the building as collateral. Let's give it, let's give them some credit. They want to know that the building is safe and sound and functioning. They want to know there's a reserve study in place. If you had to do a special assessment because of deferred maintenance, they want to know why it occurred. And they want to know what, what the plan is so that they can do that. That leads me into the reserves because that's the next part of this. And this is interesting because. In my discussion today, we're going to talk about first FHA, then we're going to talk about CAI and national standards, and then we're going to talk about our local legislature and kind of wrap this all together, what we see coming down the road here. And the road has a lot of potholes, let me assure you. Anyway, so what the reserve requirements is, is you have to have a reserve study. And where they used to have this provision that so long as the maintenance fees included reserve contributions of at least 10% of the maintenance fees, then in fact, you would qualify. That's gone. That doesn't exist anymore. Because of the fact, the reserve study in its own right has to have sufficient contributions based on a reserve study and not some arbitrary 10% of the maintenance fees. Now, I want to point out a footnote, by the way, that I used to lecture on this, that you really read the FHA rules. It's not ten percent of the maintenance fees. It's ten percent of income. So those people who submeter electricity and do all these other things would have to include that and calculate the ten percent. But in some ways, who cares anymore because it's all been thrown out because that's not a valid method to determine you have an adequate reserve study. Reminding everybody here that again, these rules take effect January one, twenty twenty two. You're in the middle of budget season you have a chance to take a look at these things and rectify some of this so that when your current owners want to sell, they're not suing you because nobody can get a mortgage because you violated the federal rules on getting a mortgage for the most common mortgage market, the FHA. I think that's kind of interesting because you know developers often on new projects just took 10% of a number, I'm going to say maintenance fees, but it should be all income and use that number to um, uh, say, this is what the reserves are. But they, and under the current statute in Hawaii, the developer didn't have to do a reserve study. They could just use some other statistical method. And, and some chose this 10% method, which I've always opposed because there's nowhere in the statutes does it provide that, that number be an adequate number for reserves. They could have used 20 other buildings are like them, their average. They could have used other things that are available to them, but the 10% has never been an adequate number to fund reserves, uh, no matter how you look at it. And, uh, uh, and all the data statistics I have in my database show that the 10% is about 20% of what they really need to put into the reserves. But they like to keep the maintenance fees low so they can sell units, I guess. So, uh, but that's in our, kind of based on how our Hawaii developers have done it so far. So kind of circling back on the FHA, Fannie Mae, on January 1, 2022, it's gonna be harder to get a mortgage for your, for your sellers and your buyers who wanna transact uh, a real estate transaction. And they're gonna to have to have a reserve study in place. 
and they're going to have to ignore the 10% concept. They're going to have to, they got an existing budget special assessments. They better have an explanation and it better show that the reserve study doesn't let this happen again. And then you got to have a building that's in good shape and the reserve study will be looked at again. So if they have major components coming down the road, some of them so major they may require you to move out, you don't have the availability of an FHA mortgage anyway. So this is serious stuff. This is very serious stuff. And uh, it's going to have a dramatic impact in the future because of that one collapse. And I said in my last show, you know, Hawaii probably has one of the most robust laws. Uh, the Surfside condominium failure uh, had a lot to do with not just uh, ignored maintenance and and their laws are required owner approval and the board couldn't get the owner approval to, to borrow the money. And, uh, but it also had issues that the structural design was quite unique, exposing it to um, um, uh, a more likely problem if they didn't maintain the building where uh, our buildings which are more stacked, uh, uh, theoretically probably have less risk of that type of a tragedy. But at the end of the day, who cares? Because the government's saying they're not gonna loan money anymore unless you meet this new criteria, which leads me in to Community Association Institute, CAI. And I may have mentioned to you that I'm on the national task force with regard to reserve studies. And because again, a Surfside, they're looking at what the national policy for CAI should be with regard to reserve studies. And I have the draft Reserve Study Funding Plan Public Policy in front of me. And I'm going to give you a little bit of, uh, this isn't approved yet, it's not final yet, but it again dovetails into where reserves are going. And, and my call to arms on this is that if condominiums don't start taking this into consideration in the budget process, they're going to have serious problems because they won't be able to sell units and uh, you know have serious problems with regard to uh, uh, the, the, the market value of, of condominiums. So anyway, what does CAI say because of Surfside? Ignoring, of course, they wrote this policy before uh, the uh, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac came out with this letter yesterday, but uh, everybody's looking at this. So let's look at what CAI supports. Number one, all homeowner and condo associations have to do a reserve study and it has to be compliant with national reserve study standards. There are standards that were established on how to do a reserve study. So you just can't, you know, Mark Twain said there's lies, damn lies and statistics. You just can't make up the numbers. There's gotta be a basis for it, a, a, a support to the number to create the, uh, to create the uh, reserve study. So what they're saying is that number one, you, if you do a reserve study, it's gotta be the national standards, okay? It's a little different than Hawaii because you know Hawaii doesn't require you to hire a professional to do it. So I guess an amateur could do the national standards if it's, particularly if it's a small place with not a whole lot of components. But, but the reality is that if you're a bigger place, you probably are gonna have to end up hiring someone to do this. And a, uh, there's different sources from that. They aren't all CAI people. Number two, which is related to this, what they said is if you're a developer with a new project, you have to do a reserve study. And, you know, we've always talked about level one, level two, level three reserve studies, the level three being kind of an update, level one, the most robust. No one ever talks about the level four reserve study because the level four reserve study is for new projects, new developer projects only. And because you haven't built the projects, you're doing the reserve study based on plans and industry experience. But still, the data must comply with national standards. So what they're saying at CAI is uh, developers, you in the future have to do a reserve study. Now, Hawaii law doesn't require that. You know, Hawaii law gives them the right to say the first reserve study will be done by the new board once the association's formed. We've seen all over Hawaii lawsuits against developers because the numbers were severely understated and there were big maintenance fee increases within a year of the association being formed. But national CAI is recommending the legislatures. They adopt policies 
to mandate new developers do a level four reserve study. I think it's a good thing, by the way. Okay, number three, when you do a reserve study, you've got to identify whether it's a level one, level two, level three. It's got to be done for condos, homeowner associations, plan unit developments, um, uh, you know, uh, any other type of association uh, that has a, a like a co-op that has common property to it. And you have to define all the components. And even if you're a small project, like I own in a project that has the only common elements are road under this policy, a proposed policy. If in fact they only have one item of road, if that item is more than $10,000 to repair, which in this case is probably a quarter of a million, you still have to do a reserve study by someone's capable of giving you the data to fund it. So they're mandating, you know, you do a reserve study and it mandates that you must do a level one or a level two at least every three years. So the level three, which is the update where you kind of adjust the numbers from what you did do, what you didn't do, what the new costs are, and more from uh, uh, phone calls, a few speculative ideas uh, goes away because under level two and level one, you've got to go talk to somebody and get more specific information. So, you know, Mandating level two updates of the site visit on a periodic basis. And then a level one thereafter is to be mandate. So next they want mandatory disclosure. So they want to mandate. I understand this is true in Hawaii anyway, that they want a reserve study in the funding plan to be made available to all owners and available to all future buyers. They want it to be a mandatory disclosure. And so uh, they want it in a standardized disclosure form. They want the reserve study to be required, to be prepared by a reserve specialist, which is the CAI, a, a certified person, a reserve professional. There are other reserve organizations like Association of Professional Reserve Analysts or other qualified professionals like an engineer or architect. So they want the study to be uh, prepared uh, and conducted by them. It's interesting because you'll see reserve studies have two parts. They have the component part, which an architect engineer can do well on. And then you have the funding part, which is kind of a forecast of the money you need, when you need it, how much you need over what period of time. Uh, most of those professionals don't have the skills where reserve specialists and other reserve experts uh, have that skill. So it's probably a blend of the rest of it. And they want the ability of the board, are you ready for this? This would change Hawaii law. They want the ability of the board to make structural repairs without the approval of the owners if it's a life safety issue involved. So we're now in Hawaii, if you want to go borrow $10 million to do your wastewater pipes, you have to get the loan of the owners, approval, the approval to borrow the money from the owners. Under the CAI's proposed rules, that in fact, you would uh, be able to, just as a board, make a business policy decision. Now, on that note, because we're a little past the halfway part, we're going to take a one minute break. And I'm going to then come back and talk about what we oppose and then what the Hawaii legislature has said to me as we prepare for 2022. We'll be right back. Aloha, I'm Christine Linders, physical therapist and board certified orthopedic clinical specialist. And I am the host of Movement Matters, a show that is designed to bring you the best physical therapy tips and exercises so that you can have your best body and do all the things that you love. You can watch my show every other Tuesday at 11 a.m. on thinktechhawaii.com, where I show you instructional videos from the top of your head to the bottom of your toes to get your body feeling its best. Remember, life is better when you listen to your physical therapist. I'll see you on Tuesday.
I'm back. That was a quick minute. I uh, get my catch my breath here. Uh, we went a little longer past the midway point because I didn't want to break. What I was telling you what CAI supports. Uh, basically, what they oppose is two things, and it's driven a lot by other states and and other laws. You know, uh, I should look and give you this information if I have it here. You know, interesting statistic, but. Essentially, what it says is that uh, most states here in Hawaii, in the U.S., don't have a uh, have a uh, mandatory reserve law. And so, looking at that number, just to give it to you, um, reserve studies are required in nine states, which includes Hawaii. Reserve funding is is required. That is. Not a reserve study, but uh, and funding, but but just uh, some kind of disclosure in another eleven states. So you can see, out of the U.S., there's twenty or fifty states that uh, address this issue in some form or another. But it's coming. Believe me, let me tell you, it's coming everywhere. So what does CAI oppose? They oppose because of Florida, I think, allowing the owners to opt out of the reserve study. Interesting, because you see, when you look at our sprinkler system that was mandated by our city council in Honolulu, the boards have the right and the owners have the right with a 50% vote to opt out of funding the sprinkler system. And you can get into technical arguments whether the sprinkler system was never there in the first place, whether you have to reserve for it or not because it's a life safety issue. But ignoring that, they don't want owners to be able to opt out of funding uh, reserve re, re, reserve requirements. That is, if in fact you have a need, you have to fund that need, and and it's going to either be through borrowing, and that's why they propose that uh, boards can borrow without owner approval, um, or it's going to be through increased assessments, because if you have a short term need for something and you have no money, the calculation is going to be a whole lot of money you're going to have to pay in. You know, and uh, that's it. Number two, believe it or not, there are certain bylaws of certain associations on the mainland that prohibit inspections by structural and architectural engineers without the owner's approval. As bizarre as that sounds to me, uh, there are places that prohibit structural and engineering inspections of the building by appropriate professionals. And uh, and so that's an integral part to doing a reserve plan because you know a person who's planning and designing the new wastewater system is not going to be a reserve expert in anything else but the wastewater system. So uh, anyway, they want to prohibit anybody from preventing structural and engineering inspections as necessary in the preparation of the reserve study. So anyway, the best practice is, is to have a reserve study, have it done by a professional, update it with a, uh, with a, uh, a professional opinion, not less than every three years. And um, if you're a small association community with not much going on, you still have to do a reserve study, but uh, the requirements might be a little less. So that's kind of the, that. Now, I know you won't be surprised. But now the Hawaii legislators are calling CAI, calling people like myself who do this, and saying, we want to introduce laws in the state of Hawaii this year to prevent the Surfside disaster from happening. And they're also upset, believe it or not, because of all these major increases in new projects of maintenance fees. And they want to stop developers from being able to uh, uh, not adequately provide information with respect to um, what the public report, what the true costs are going to be. I mean, you can imagine if you're an affordable housing owner, workforce housing owner, uh, you're on a limited budget. You need to know really what it's going to cost you when you buy in. And, and I can tell you now, because I'm involved in several cases, that uh, the horror stories of people who believed the public report and found out the numbers weren't accurate and they had to get second and third jobs or sell or do things and the penalties are just sad. So 
Um, anyway, you can be assured that our legislature is going to introduce legislation this year and it's going to probably recommend that along the CAI lines that developers have to do a reserve study at level four. They're probably going to recommend that you have to disclose your reserve study. And it has to be, a, if you're a certain size or certain conditions exist, have to be done by a person qualified to do a reserve study. And number three, if you have a reserve study, you're probably going to have to fund it or there's going to be all sorts of disclosures which will screw up all your financing with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. So it, it's going to be a change this year, in my opinion. Um, I think there'll be um, enough pressure because of the history and what's going on in Hawaii that we're going to see the legislature tackle. Uh, I know several legislators now who are writing bills and some of them are pretty onerous and some of them have some substance to them and aren't so bad, but uh, it's a changing world. And sadly, in the following the pandemic and people were sort of struggling with their budgets, there's going to be pressure on condo and uh, to have a proper reserve study. And there's going to be a pressure on homeowner associations and other associations to do a reserve study and be mandated to do it and all sorts of disclosure requirements. And that's not bad, in my opinion. But on that note, I've filled up the time schedule we have here and giving you the bad news is something to ponder and think about. Know that CAI Legislative Action Committee will do its best to have reasonable legislation with respect to uh, uh, any changes to our reserve study law. That being said, I don't think uh, anyone's gonna look the other way and not identify the problems we have uh, with associations and major assessments and, and, um, and not address in some form or another some changes to the reserve law this year. Now, it may not pass because of political pressure and everything else, but I can see that train coming down the track and it's got a, a full boiler of wood and steam and, and, and heading down that track pretty quick. So on that note, thank you for watching Condo Insider. This is Richard Emery, your host. We look forward to you watching next Thursday. I'm going to invite one of our legislators to come join me in the next couple of weeks to talk about this from their perspective. So uh, tune in and, and uh, think about your reserve study and put a little more energy and time in it. It's going to become a bigger issue for all condos throughout the state of Hawaii and throughout the United States. Aloha.